Hey what's going on guys Tanmay for simple snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial under network security and today's topic is going to be idea algorithm so in the previous video we saw one big algorithm that is des algorithm and its types and everything revolving around des so we've covered a lot in detail in that video so if you have missed that video you can check it out and you can also see a link on the top right corner so that's a card which points to that video anyways moving on to today's topic that is idea which is international data encryption algorithm so again we are going to be taking a detailed look at this algorithm starting from a little bit of theory then the overall process then we'll see individual step by step what happens in every step and we'll see how encryption goes and i'll try to make this video more easy to understand by some diagrammatic representations so that things get more interesting so with that being said let's start off with a little bit of theory on idea algorithm so it was launched in 1990s and uh, des came prior to this in the 1970s so des was much more famous than idea it is implemented in 1992 after it underwent certain changes i'm not going to get into a lot of history of idea you can google that up but yeah it's quite strong algorithm but it is not as popular as i mentioned as des because des came in earlier and one popular email privacy technology known as pretty good privacy is based on idea okay so the concept of pretty good privacy which is another technology is based on the idea algorithm moving ahead idea is a block cipher so it operates on 64 bits of block you can see the input plain text over here which is 64 bits and out output cipher text which is again 64 bits and like des it works on 64 bit plain text now the key consists of 128 bits so this is different because in des it was 56 bit keys and now here it is 128 bit key also again idea is reversible like des which means that idea is symmetric in nature which essentially means that there is only one key which is used for both encryption and decryption and idea uses both diffusion and confusion for encryption so essentially it uses both substitution and transposition right so that's what diffusion and confusion means confusion means substitution and diffusion means transposition okay okay so this was a little bit of theory on idea and uh, So let's see the overall process what is exactly happening in the idea algorithm. Okay so on the right hand side you have a overview diagram of the entire process and on the left hand side you have the theory which states how the step by step process goes. So I'm just going to read this theory because it's very easy to understand and then you can see the diagram as well. So the 64 bit input plain text is divided into four portions of 16 bits each. So as you can see this is the input plain text of 64 bits and there are basically eight rounds which i'll come to in a minute so first thing we have to divide this 64 bit into four blocks of 16 bits you can see p1 to p4 okay so you can see thus p1 to p4 are inputs for the first round of the algorithm so what are these rounds so there are eight such rounds okay and we'll see what happens in one single round and then everything in that round is repeated eight times so we'll come to that in a minute right now let's just take an overview now the key consists of 128 bits okay but in each round six sub keys are generated and each sub key consists of 16 bits so out of this total of 128 bit long key we are generating six sub keys which are of 16 bits per round okay so for one round we need six keys so we have eight rounds right so for eight rounds we would need 8 into 6 that is 48 keys right now these sub keys are applied to the four input blocks p1 to p4 so since p1 p2 p3 p4 are individually 16 bits and the key is also 16 bits that is the sub key which we generate so we apply this sub key to these individual blocks of p1 p2 p3 and p4 in a particular order and we'll see that when we see the one round in detail and the final step consists of output transformation which again uses four more sub keys okay so these sub keys are again 16 bits so you can see this is that final round so starting from round 1 to round 2 to round 3 and then dot 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 which means there are between rounds that is round 4 5 6 7 and this is the eighth round and after that we have one last process that is known as output transformation which again uses four sub keys and then we get the cipher text c1 c2 c3 c4 which is 16 bits each we combine it to get the output cipher text of 64 bits so now you can see for round 1 we are using six keys k1 to k6 so this k is the key and k1 means first sub key k6 means the sixth sub key 
so on and so forth. So for round two, we would need K7 to K12. Then for round three, K13 to K18. And for the last round, K43 to 48. And for output transformation, as we mentioned, we need four more sub keys, right? So that would be K49 to K52. So this is the overall process. Okay, so we'll see how those keys are also formed in a separate slide in this video itself in a minute. But this is the overall overview of what happens in the idea algorithm. Okay. Okay, so now that you have an overview of the entire process, you know, there is input text of 64 bits, it is divided into four 16 bit blocks, and then eight rounds are performed. And then we have one output transformation process, and then we get the cipher text. So now let's move to this round. So what exactly is this round and what happens in one particular round? So once you understand what happens in one round, that same thing is repeated in all the eight rounds with the only difference being that there are separate keys or different keys used in every round. Okay. So let's see that one single round. Okay. So on the left, you have some details about single round, what happens in terms of theory. And on the right, the diagram that you see are the 14 steps that happen in one single round. Okay. So. Let me just read it out. There are eight rounds. So we know that there are eight rounds in the idea algorithm. We just saw that in the overview diagram and each involves series of operations on four data blocks using six keys. So in the previous diagram, we saw that the 64 bit block of PT was divided into P1, P2, P3 and P4 and each were of 16 bits, right? So each round involves series of operations on four data blocks. That is this P1 to P4 using six keys. So every round requires six keys. Now these steps are performed with a lot of mathematical actions and the three main actions are multiply modulo, addition modulo and XOR operations. So multiply star means multiplication modulo and add star means addition modulo. So what these two operations mean that when we combine modulus with multiply, it becomes multiply modulo, which means that after multiplication, if the value exceeds certain number, then you take a mod operation. And I hope you know what is modulo operation. That is, we take the remainder instead of the quotient, right? Similarly, add modulo means we perform addition. And then if the value is exceeding certain number, then you perform a modulo operation. So this is the only difference. And now let's see the steps. So step number one is multiply P1 and K1. So P1 is the first 16 bit block from the 64 bit plain text. And then we multiply modulo it with K1. So K1 is the first key. Then we move on to step number two. Step number two is add modulo P2 and K2. So this P2 and then we have another key. So we have six keys, right? So we have K1 to K6 for one round. So we are taking the plain text two and performing addition modulo with K2. Then we have addition modulo between P3 and K3. So we take P3, we take K3 and perform addition modulo. So step number four is multiply modulo P4 and K4. Now step number five is XOR the result of step number one and step number three. So, so step number one, we get an output, right? So when we perform multiply modulo between P1 and K1, we get some output. So we take that and in step number three, we get some result. We perform addition modulo between P3 and K3. So we'll get some result over here. So in step number five, what we're doing is we're taking these two outputs and we're performing an XOR operation. Similarly, in step number six, we are performing XOR operation between two and four. So two and four, we are performing XOR operation. Now step number seven is multiply modulo the result of step five with K5. So after we get a result at step number five, we take that and we perform multiply modulo with the K5. That is key number five. Step number eight is addition modulo the result of step six and seven. So we perform addition modulo between these two steps. Step number nine is multiply modulo the result of step eight with K6. So whatever result we get over here, we multiply modulo with K6. That is the last key, key number six. Step 10 is addition modulo the result of step seven and nine. So whatever result we get at step seven and whatever result we get at, at nine, we perform addition modulo over here. Similarly, step 11 is XOR the result of step one and nine. Step 12 is XOR the result of step 3 and 9. Step 13 is XOR the result of step 2 and step 10. And the last step is XOR the result of step 4 and step 10. Now I know this looks a little bit tedious to even remember. And I know if you're a student, especially if you're an IT or computer science student who has this network security as a subject and idea algorithm in your syllabus, this is something that you have to buy at and there is no other way out. 
So you need to buy out all these 14 steps. And I'm not going to tell you how to actually remember it. You can do it in your own way. But these are the 14 steps and they have to be carried out in this order itself. That's how one single round is. And this single round is repeated eight times. Okay. So I hope you understand this step. You can probably take a screenshot of the screen or you can draw it in your book right away. You can make notes of the theory as well if you're preparing for your answers. But yeah, this was one single round. So now let's see how we get 54 different sub keys from the 128 bit original key. Okay. Okay. So you just saw what happens in one single round and that one single round happens eight times. And in every round, we use six sub keys, which are 16 bit, right? So for eight rounds, we need eight into six, that is 48 sub keys, right? And for the final output transformation, we use four more sub keys, which means we need 52 total sub keys for the entire idea encryption process. But originally, we have a key which is only of 128 bits. Now, if you were to create 52 keys of 16 bit length, so 52 into 16 is equal to 832 bits. Okay. But we don't have 832 bits, right? We have 128 bits. So, how are we going to generate 52 sub keys which are unique? So, here's a process which is known as shifting of bits. So, we perform right shift or left shift to get these unique keys, and we'll talk about it in a minute. So we've probably also seen this in previous videos. If you've been following this network security playlist, we've seen what happens when we circular shift bits using a shift register in the algorithm modes video. And we also saw it in the DES algorithm video also. So let me just explain what exactly happens. So originally we have 128 bit key, right? So for the first round, we have K1, K2 till K6 and each key is 16 bits. So K1 is bit number 1 to 16. K2 is bit number 17 to 32 and then till K6 we are utilizing 96 bits of the original 128 bit key. Okay. So you can see six keys used for the first round. Now we have unused bits which is 97 to 128. So we can use them for the next round, right? So here's what happens. So unused bits are 97 to 128. So we are making K1 and K2 from 97 to 112 and 113 to 128 for the two keys for the second round. Now every round requires six keys. So for the second round, we only have two keys and we have exhausted the entire 128 bit original key, right? So now what to do? So now what we're going to do is we're going to circular shift the entire 128 bit original key by 25 bits. Now circular left shift means what happens is if the original key is having some values like 10, 10, 10, 10, something like that. When we circular shift left by 25 bits, 25 bits starting from the left are being pushed out and they are basically added at the end of that key itself. So first 25 bits from the left side will be taken and added to the rear end of that key. Okay. So this 101010 will be added over here. So this, these are only like one, two, three, four, five, six, six bits right now. And let's say from here we have zero, zero, zero. So what hap what will happen is these things will be or these six bits will be added at the end. And now the key will start from this value 000. Okay. So the size will always remain 128 bits. But every time a circular shift happens, first 25 bits of the original key will be added at the end of the same key. So this will create a new key, right? Because the bits are being shifted by 25 bits every time. And since 25 bit is an odd figure, right? So if you were circular shifting by 16 positions, then there would come a time where the original bit key will again come back, right? Because we are having sub keys of 16 bit only. So we cannot shift by 16 bits because after n number of or after certain number of left circular shifts of 16 bits, we will get back the original key. So that's why we are taking an odd number of 25 bits. And this will make sure that after every 25 bit of shift, we are getting some unique new 28 bit key. So after circular left shift by 25 bits, we are getting a new 128 bit key itself. So now we can again use this to form new sub keys, right? So previously we had formed K1 and K2 for the second round. Then we can form K3 and K4 until K6 and use these 64 bits initially. But now you can see we have unused bits from 67 to 128. So again, this will be used for the third round to make more keys and when the keys are less, we will perform a circular shift by 25 bits and then again we will get a new original 128 bit key. 
सो आई होप यू गेट दिस प्रोसेस ऑफ सर्क्यूलर शिफ्टिंग सो आफ्टर वी एक्सॉस्टेड वन ट्वेंटी एट बिट्स एवरी टाइम वी विल सर्क्यूलर शिफ्ट बाई ट्वेंटी फाइव बिट्स एंड दैट विल गिव अस अ न्यू की सो फ्रॉम दैट न्यू की वील अगेन मेक दोज सब कीज टिल वी रीच फिफ्टी टू सब कीज सो दिस इज द एंटायर प्रोसेस ऑफ सब की जनरेशन वेर इन टिल वी गेट फिफ्टी टू सब कीज वी कीप ऑन शिफ्टिंग द ओरिजिनल वन ट्वेंटी एट बिट की बाय ट्वेंटी फाइव बिट्स एंड देन वी क्रिएट दीज सब कीज सो आई होप नाउ यू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ वी कैन क्रिएट फिफ्टी टू सब कीज ईच ऑफ सिक्सटीन बिट लेंथ जस्ट फ्रॉम वन ट्वेंटी एट बिट ओरिजिनल की ओके सो दैट वॉज सब की जनरेशन एंड नाउ वी प्रिटी मच रीच द लास्ट स्टेप ऑफ द एंटायर इंक्रिप्शन प्रोसेस दैट इज वी आर ओवर यूर बिकॉज वी सॉ द वन राउंड वॉट एपन्स इन वन सिंगल राउंड एंड देन फॉर द एट डिफरेंट राउंड्स इट इज रिपीटेड ओवर एंड ओवर अगेन राइट सो वी नो वॉट एपन्स इन वन सिंगल राउंड विच मीन्स दैट एवरी थिंग इज रिपीटेड इन ऑल द अदर राउंड्स सो आफ्टर द फर्स्ट एट राउंड्स we come to this process of output transformation which only happens one time so it is a one time operation and it takes place at the end of eighth round so the input to the output transformation is a 64 bit value which comes from the eighth round so after eighth round we have again four blocks of text right so it's all jumbled up but it is still 64 bits and it can be divided into four blocks which is again you can see p1 to p4 so the four 16 bit sub keys which are left out that is from k49 to k52 are being applied over here and this process of output transformation is as follows so you can see this diagram so this happens at the last only once so what we do is we multiply r1 and k1 so r1 is basically key 49 that is the last remaining keys so i have named them as k1 to k4 so k1 is 16 bit and r1 which is this basically so this is r okay so these are r values and not p so it's just naming convention so we perform multiply modulo between r1 and k1 so we take this block and we take the k1 and perform multiply modulo then we add r2 and k2 that is addition modulo then we perform addition modulo between r3 and k3 and lastly we again multiply modulo r4 and k4 okay so r4 and the last key k52 or k4 and after this one time operation that is output transformation which again you have to buy art so you need to know all these steps in this particular order what we get is cipher text block 1 cipher text block 2 c3 and c4 each are 16 bits long and then when we combine it we get the final output cipher text so yeah this was the complete process of idea algorithm i hope you have a very good idea now how idea algorithm operates we discussed in detail about a little bit of theory on idea algorithm when it was developed what are the principles of idea algorithm and that it's a block cipher it is symmetric algorithm then we also saw in detail what happens in one single round and then that same single round is repeated eight times lastly we saw the output transformation process which finally gives us the 64 bit cipher text and in between we also saw how we can generate 52 sub keys each of 16 bit length from only 128 bit original key by performing circular left shift operation by 25 bits So I hope the entire process is clear to you now and that's it for this video guys I hope you like this video if you like this video please give it a thumbs up let me know in the comments that you like this video and share it with your friends as well also if you haven't yet subscribed on this channel guys make sure you subscribe so that you get notified whenever i upload a new video and thanks for watching i'll see you guys in the next video peace